Good morning, and welcome to Oakland University. My name is Michaela Gibson, and I am an admissions advisor with undergraduate admissions. We are excited that you have chosen to attend our Go for the Gold program. I would like to start off by telling you a little bit about Oakland University's history, academic programs, and campus life, in addition to our admissions and scholarship information. Oakland University was founded in 1957 thanks to a $2 million donation by Alfred and Matilda Wilson. We are a young university, which is very exciting because there is room for constant growth. OU is home to over 19,000 students, and more than 3,000 of those students live here on campus. OU also has more than 120,000 alumni worldwide. Nearly 75% of OU's alumni live here in Michigan. Oakland University has a beautiful campus of 1,443 acres and is home to Meadowbrook Hall, one of Michigan's National Historic Landmarks. Also, all of our academic buildings are centrally located on campus for easy access. Oakland University proudly boasts one of the lowest crime rates in Oakland County and the number one safest public university in Michigan and third nationally, partially due to the many safety features in use around campus. There are over 100 blue lights across campus which will connect anyone directly to OUPD dispatch. They also offer text message alerts which will send notifications directly to your phone in the event of an emergency situation on campus. Students and parents are both eligible to receive these and can enroll on OUPD's website. OUPD's officers are also on campus 24-7, 365 days a year. More than 3,000 students live on campus, calling one of the residence halls or apartments home. Hamlin Hall houses first-year students, and Oakview Hall is the newest home to the Honors College. We're excited about the opening of our newest residence hall, Hillcrest Hall, which houses 750 students and has a new cafeteria and a satellite recreation center. We also offer special interest floors, which offer social and academic support. Student involvement plays a large role in the lives of our students. OU offers more than 300 student organizations, including academic, social, Greek, political, and spiritual groups. The university regularly plans trips to fun places like New York, Chicago, or Boston. Our Office for Student Involvement also offers discounted tickets to various events and performances throughout the Metro Detroit area. OU has 18 men's and women's varsity sports. OU competes in NCAA Division I athletics as part of the Horizon League. The Golden Grizzlies have brought home 28 regular season titles, 77 conference tournament titles, and have made 55 NCAA tournament appearances. For more information, please visit OUGrizzlies.com. At Oakland, we encourage students to live, study, or work within a different culture through more than 180 study abroad programs in over 40 countries. For example, our students studying a concentration in archaeology can travel to Israel to see historic and religious sites that were covered in class, participate in an archaeological dig, and conduct groundbreaking research. Oakland offers 140 undergraduate programs and more than 130 graduate and certificate programs. These are divided into several professional schools and one liberal arts and science college. Please refer to oakland.edu backslash academics for more information. The College of Arts and Sciences is comprised of a variety of academic departments devoted to teaching and researching liberal arts, including the humanities, social sciences, visual and performing arts, and mathematical and laboratory sciences. The college offers nearly 100 majors and a wide range of diverse disciplines, such as actuarial science, graphic design, 
biomedical sciences, cinema studies, criminal justice, environmental studies, international relations, social work, and world music, as well as more traditional disciplines such as chemistry, English, history, philosophy, and psychology to enhance and complement their primary focus. Faculty in the college offer students opportunities for creative endeavors, research, and educational exploration that transcend the typical classroom experience and prepare students for a rich, productive life. It is not our mission to train you for a single job, but instead to prepare you to be successful in life, in your first job, your last job, and every job in between. We accomplish this by assisting you to develop transferable skills that remain critically in demand even in the face of technological advancements and social change. Through the transfer and construction of a knowledge base and through the cultivation of the habits of the mind, our graduates develop and mature into successful, productive members of society who can appreciate others, experience and embrace the notion of empathy, discover meaningful and productive careers, and come to understand the joys and benefits of lifelong learning. Whether you're deciding on a major or still exploring your options, the First Year Advising Center provides academic advising for all first year students, students who are undecided or redeciding their majors past the first year, as well as undecided transfer students. Your assigned advisor will introduce you to helpful resources and tools to assist you in developing a balanced schedule and making informed decisions about your major and future career goals. The Honors College offers a unique environment for high achieving students through smaller class sizes and special topic general education courses, as well as giving graduating seniors the opportunity to complete a thesis on a topic of their choosing. In response to the current COVID-19 pandemic, the Honors College has opted into test optional admissions for the entering class of the fall 2021 for students with a GPA of a 3.7 or above. Those students with above a 3.3 GPA must complete a separate application in addition to an interview for consideration. OU Presidential Scholar Award recipients are automatically accepted into the Honors College. Of course, all undergraduate majors are welcome to apply to this challenging, unique environment for high-achieving students. The Oakland University William Beaumont School of Medicine welcomed its 10th class in the fall of 2020. Students receive instruction in basic sciences and research at OU and take part in clinical training and applied research at Beaumont Health System. The school is a member of an elite group, one of just 141 MD granting medical schools in the country. Nursing Direct Admit is one of OU's academically competitive programs. A limited number of entering freshmen will be offered direct admission into Oakland University School of Nursing basic BSN track. Students interested in attending OU in the fall should apply to the university and submit a required essay by November 1st of their senior year to be considered for the Direct Admit Nursing program. To be considered for OU's Business Honors Direct Admit program, you must gain admission and complete a supplemental application. Although, we do recommend that you have your application in by December 1st of your senior year of high school. And, as I mentioned earlier, students wishing to study in the Department of Music, Theater, and Dance must gain admission to the university, then apply for an audition within the department. Students applying for the fall of 2021 can find audition dates online at oakland.edu backslash smtd. I'd now like to walk you through the process of applying to Oakland University. Applying is easy and the application is found online at oakland.edu backslash apply. The application is free 
and we are currently accepting applications for the winter, summer, and fall semesters of 2021. The average incoming freshman has a 3.5 GPA and a score of 1130 on the SAT or a score of 25 on the ACT. Typically, OU will admit first-year students with a 2.5 cumulative grade point average. For the fall of 2021, we have temporarily shifted to test-optional admission in light of the COVID-19 pandemic. SAT and ACT scores are not required for admission consideration for fall 2021. Students are still encouraged to send test scores if and when they have them for course placement or additional scholarship consideration. The test optional policy is under review for the class of 2022 and beyond. Our average incoming transfer student has a 3.1 GPA. Generally, transfer students with college credits of 24 or more and a 2.5 GPA or higher are admitted. Transfer students must submit all transcripts from every college they have attended. However, transfer students with fewer than 24 credits must also submit their high school transcripts. Scholarship consideration at OU is automatic. There is no separate application for merit scholarships. To receive fall scholarship consideration, we recommend that incoming freshman students apply and have all materials submitted to OU by March 1st of their senior year of high school. While scholarship consideration is based upon your cumulative grade point average and test score at the time of admission, students are welcome to submit updated transcripts and test scores to be reconsidered for scholarships. This chart shows our scholarship offerings for incoming freshmen. All of these are merit-based, awarded based on your GPA and test scores, except for the University Recognition Award, where no test score is required. You can find your GPA on the left and match it with your highest test score to find the scholarship you qualify for. Transfers should apply by August 1st for fall scholarship consideration, December 1st for winter, and July 1st for summer. Transfer scholarship consideration is also based upon the student's cumulative grade point average at the time of admission. Currently, tuition is based upon class standing, course, and course level. Different tuition rates also apply to courses offered by the School of Health Sciences, School of Business Administration, School of Nursing, and the School of Engineering and Computer Science, regardless of major. For more specific information and to view the rates by course and course level, please refer to the information in your bag or visit oakland.edu backslash tuition. University housing offers a variety of living options suited to your individual needs and interests. Housing rates for a double occupancy room for the 2020-2021 fall and winter semesters combined start at $10,639. More detailed information on housing and tuition rates can be found on the tuition rates flyer in your bag. For all newly admitted students planning to attend OU, we encourage you to activate your account if you haven't already. Activating your account will allow you to choose your net ID, which will act as your OU email. If you have been offered any merit scholarships, you will want to accept those by going to oakland.edu backslash scholar accept. Additionally, all admitted students are encouraged to register for new student orientation. Registration is available online at oakland.edu backslash orientation to lock in your spot in our incoming class. For those students attending OU in the fall of 2021, applications for housing are now available. Students may apply at oakland.edu backslash housing backslash apply. For students starting at OU in the winter of 2022, applications to live on campus are available beginning November 1st. I would also like to stress the importance of the financial aid process. To be considered for financial aid, students must 
complete the FAFSA, the free application for federal student aid. The form is available every year beginning October 1st and can be completed at FAFSA.gov. Additionally, for those students who have yet to take the SAT or for those still planning to retake the test and are looking to improve their scores for scholarship consideration, we would like to remind you that the Khan Academy offers free SAT preparation for students. Finally, if there is any information that you saw today that you would like to learn more about, you may refer to the reminder email and you'll find all of our digital materials there for you to browse at any time. I would like to thank each and every one of you for visiting with us virtually. And I would also like to encourage you to register for one of our in-person tours to learn even more about the application process as well as our university. You may go to oakland.edu backslash visit to see availability for daily campus tours as well as other virtual events. At this time, we will move on to the next presentation. Hello, and thank you for joining us today. My name is Gregory Ash, and I'm a Senior Financial Aid Outreach Advisor with Student Financial Services. I'm happy to be here with you today to share some information about financial aid at Oakland University and answer any questions you might have. Today, I'll talk about costs to consider when attending college, how to apply for financial aid from a variety of sources, and the types of aid you will be eligible to receive from Oakland University, the state and federal governments, as well as private resources. Please feel free to submit your questions during the presentation, and I'll take some time at the end to answer them for you. When attending college, there are many costs to consider. Oakland prides itself on being a fee-free institution so the only billable charges you'll have are tuition and housing if you choose to live on campus. Even the laundry and toilet paper and housing are free. You should also expect to have expenses related to your education, but not billed directly by Oakland University, such as books, living off campus or at home, transportation, and living expenses. When Student Financial Services is preparing your financial aid offer, we estimate these billable charges and non-billable expenses, then add them together to determine the cost of attendance. Financial aid is intended to provide you options to pay for your billable charges and help to pay for your non-billable expenses. So the cost of attendance is the maximum amount of financial aid you are offered. In order to pay for college, students can be eligible for financial aid, including scholarships, grants, work study, and loans. In order to apply for financial aid, students should complete the free application for federal student aid, also known as the FAFSA. Most financial aid requires the FAFSA, and when we say file early, we mean it. The FAFSA should be completed beginning October 1st, or shortly thereafter, of the student's senior year of high school. Some financial aid is offered on a first come first serve basis. One of the reasons we recommend filing the FAFSA when it becomes available October 1st to apply for the next school year. You can file the FAFSA electronically on FAFSA.gov or using the My Student Aid app available for iOS and Android devices. If you have your phone or tablet handy, you can open your camera and point it at the QR code for whichever operating system you use. A banner will open when you can download the app. While there is a paper application for FAFSA, it is recommended you file electronically for a variety of reasons. Filing the FAFSA electronically is much faster for, to process. It takes just three to five days, and there are a number of security measures taken to ensure your information remains private, such as the data retrieval tool, which allows most users to upload their tax information right from the IRS website. The electronic FAFSA is also shorter and much more relevant to your household because it uses skip logic to eliminate questions that no longer apply to you based on the questions you've already answered. 
If you need help completing the FAFSA, Student Financial Services offers free private appointments for anyone who needs help completing the application. Oakland University Undergraduate Admissions automatically awards OU merit-based scholarships through the admissions process, so no additional applications are required. Student Financial Services automatically awards our need-based grants when processing the FAFSA. Every student who qualifies for scholarships and grants is guaranteed to receive the award. We are not limited to the number of students who receive the award. Annual departmental scholarships are also available through Oakland University Academic and Student Services Department for application and selection beginning due the student's first year. Oakland University offers a number of need-based grants available to students who complete the FAFSA and meet certain eligibility criteria. The Golden Grizzly Tuition Guarantee Grant is offered to first-time freshmen who are Michigan residents with the expected family contribution of less than $8,000 as determined by the FAFSA. The award pays the remaining amount of tuition due after subtracting the amount of the expected family contribution and any other gift aid. This award is renewable for up to four years or eight semesters. The OU Golden Grant is awarded up to $5,000 per year and is renewable for up to four years or eight semesters. It is awarded to first-time freshmen who are Michigan residents with a high school GPA of 3.0 and an expected family contribution of less than $8,000. The OU Housing Grant is awarded up to $5,000 per year and is renewable for up to four years or eight semesters. It's awarded to first-time freshmen who are Michigan residents with a high school GPA of 3.0 and an expected family contribution of less than $8,000. Students who receive the housing grant must live on campus with housing charges for a full semester that are not covered by another housing award. Student employment is also available at OU and may be part of the student's financial aid offer if they receive a work-study grant. Work-study and non-work-study positions are available at OU and the university employs about 1,600 student employees each year. Students are paid at least minimum wage. However, some positions pay more. Students are limited to a maximum of 25 hours per week during the fall and winter semesters. Students can work up to 40 hours per week when classes are not in session and during the summer semester. On campus and local jobs are posted on OU Handshake a platform that will grow with the student over time. Students can use Handshake to also apply for internships in their later years at OU, as well as professional positions when they graduate. The federal government offers financial aid to students, including grants, work study, student and parent loans. Some grants are offered on a first come first serve basis, like the SEOG and work study grants. One of the reasons it is important to complete the FAFSA as soon as possible on October 1st, the federal government also offers student loans awarded to the student in the student's name only. Parents are not co-signers for federal loans. The subsidized loan is interest-free while the student is in school and the unsubsidized loan accrues interest while the student is in school. Neither loan requires payment until six months after graduation However, there is no penalty for each repayment. A Parent PLUS loan may also be offered for parents to borrow in their own name. It is a credit worthy loan, so if you're approved and want to use it, you can. But if you're denied, the student gets an additional amount of an unsubsidized loan in their own name. It is an opportunity to receive additional federal aid without going to a bank or a private lender, which is, is often a more expensive option for student. The state of Michigan also provides financial aid to students and requires the FAFSA to be completed no later than March 1st in the student's senior year. The Michigan Competitive Scholarship is awarded automatically to students who complete the FAFSA and achieve a 1200 or better on the SAT. The other awards offered by the state require an application which is available through the 
My SSG student account. Students can create their My SSG student account after they file their first FAFSA. Private scholarships are also available through organizations, foundations, and companies, and students are encouraged to begin applying for these scholarships in the junior year. Students should apply regularly until they graduate from college to increase their chances to receive a greater number of scholarships. College Board, FastWeb, and Good Call are some of the many scholarship search engines students can use to apply for private scholarships. It is also a great idea to check with the high school counseling office for local scholarships aimed at students in the school or community. Some students may also have personal resources like a MET or an MESP or other college savings plans to help them pay for their education expenses. OU is proud to offer payment plans for students who choose to pay all or a portion of their charges on their own. Payment plans are available each semester a student attends to divide payments into four equal payments. Payment plans are interest free and students can easily pay with a checking or savings account. Credit and debit cards are also accepted and students are encouraged to schedule their payments to pay automatically each month. I hope you feel better prepared for the cost associated with college and more familiar with the financial aid available to you. To prepare for paying for college, there are a few things you can do even now. If you'd like to learn more about the financial aid process, please join me for a virtual financial aid presentation. Visit oakland.edu forward slash financial events for the schedule and link to join. Students and parents can visit studentaid.gov to create an FSA ID necessary to access and complete the FAFSA. Make sure you apply for private scholarships regularly to increase the number of scholarships you will use to pay for your education. Finally, make sure you file the FAFSA beginning October 1st of your senior year and every year thereafter. If you have questions after today, please contact Student Financial Services to speak with an advisor. We are open Monday through Friday from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. and are currently taking phone calls remotely. You can also visit our website at oakland.edu forward slash financial services where all of the information in this presentation is also available. You're also welcome to email our office at finservices at oakland.edu. Thank you again for attending our virtual Go for the Gold event today. I'm happy to answer any questions you may have. Welcome creative people. Today I'm going to give you the top three reasons I believe our programs are the best in the region and honestly beyond, but I don't want to brag too much. The two programs I'm talking about today, Studio Art and Graphic Design, are housed in the Department of Art and Art History. Art History is speaking at a different Go for the Gold session today. One note is that if you are a Studio Art major, you will pick a specialization in either drawing, painting, photography, or interactive art and technology. I want to make sure you know who's talking at you today. My name is Megan Barry. I know you'll have the opportunity to ask me questions, but if you want to email me, my info is here. Before I keep going, I know a lot of people, especially parents, might be wondering, what can you do with a degree in design or art? My dad was one of you, and I tell him all the time, look at me now. But in all seriousness, there's so many different career opportunities for creative people who see the world a bit differently. Did you know that Nike hires people to be color designers who choose color palettes for all of their shoes every season? That's just one example of an unexpected place where artists and designers can work, and I hope you'll keep an open mind. Okay, so the first big reason you should choose our studio art and graphic design programs is because of our resources. One resource we have is the OU Art Gallery. This gives our students access to professional artists and designers throughout the year without needing to leave campus. Students also get to show their own work before they graduate as part of the Student Senior Thesis Exhibition. 
The art gallery has its own website and I highly recommend you check it out. Our department is located primarily in Wilson Hall on campus, but we also have a large garage space we fondly call the Maker's Studio. In here, you'll find wood shop equipment, 3D printers, a laser cutter, and more. Students can also rent iPads, camera and sound equipment, and more at no fee. Graphic design majors are also able to rent a MacBook Pro at no cost, and it comes with Adobe Creative Suite. We currently have about 50 laptops available at a first come first serve basis and plan to continue to add more every year. Our programs also work with OU School of Education to provide K through 12 teaching certification. If you have more questions, I'd recommend reaching out to the School of Education directly. I know we're not traveling a lot right now, but because I'm optimistic, I think it's worth mentioning that our students can travel to Volterra, Italy, and we also have other study abroad programs in the works for when we're back to traveling. Our department also has three different student clubs that you can participate in during your time on campus. We believe the larger OU community is our biggest resource. A liberal arts degree in art and design serves students well. To be a designer or artist, you are not working in a vacuum. For example, outside of my teaching role, I run a graphic design studio in Detroit. My clients are not other designers. They're architects, community leaders, scientists, coffee roasters, and I think you can understand why I would need to maybe take a math class or a psychology class or a science class in order for me to understand their world and for me to do my job well. A liberal arts degree will give you this variety that you need to become a great designer or artist. The second reason you should choose us is because of our size. Our department is big enough to have variety, but small enough to feel intimate, and we have all those resources that OU, a big university, can offer. Our average class size for studio art and graphic design courses is between 10 and 15 people. This means the faculty know your name and you're not simply a number. You get a lot of one-on-one -on -one attention, even in an online setting. Your faculty are not just teachers, but we also are practicing artists and designers who are exhibiting our work and designing for clients outside of class time. Our curriculums are made around this experience so that what you're learning in class directly translates into the professional world. Our faculty also have the ability to write special topics courses, which keep our program current and agile. For example, in graphic design this year, we're offering a sustainable design elective course to respond to the climate crisis. You can also become a double major quite easily in the program. We also offer minors in all of our programs. So if this is something that's interesting to you, you should contact an academic advisor, which I'll give information for later. The last reason that you should choose us is because of our value. Our programs being at a public university will keep our art and design education more affordable than many four-year programs. Our university also has many agreements with local community colleges where you can complete some of your foundation courses and focus on your higher level program courses right when you come to OU. Our alumni also have been doing great things. Many go on to graduate school, like Valbona, whose work you see here. Just last week, I introduced a 2020 graphic design graduate to one of our alumni. She was interviewing at a local design studio, and I knew that our alumni had worked there before. She just gave me notification that she has accepted the job, and I have a feeling that he had a little something to do with it, as well as her training in our program. The last thing I'll note is that according to LinkedIn, the number one soft skill that employers want is creativity. We will give you creativity, as well as these other four. A liberal arts education, especially one in art and design, is invaluable in our fast-paced world. Unlike generations before, students can't plan for one career with one set of skills. So by honing these soft skills like creativity, you'll be able to adapt for whatever the future holds. So if this all sounds good, you're probably wondering what next. I know many of you are most likely thinking about fall and COVID-19. For this upcoming semester, the graphic design program has opted to go fully online. In our field, we often work remotely and believe this will become more of the norm moving forward, and this experience will actually be a benefit to our students. We do hope to be teaching in-person or hybrid again in winter 2021, but we made this decision for this semester as a community-based one. 
We want to be sure that our department partners like Studio Art have the physical and emotional space to teach in-person and hybrid courses. Studio Art faculty will also be teaching online, but they will be making safety preparations to best deliver their hands-on courses that will meet in person. We will continue as a department to adapt as needed and look forward to providing a high quality education to our students. I know a lot of people are nervous about online education, so I thought it would be helpful to read a quick excerpt from an email I received from one of my fully online students this summer. She wrote, I just want to thank you for providing such an awesome semester. Taking this class online seemed very daunting to me, but you made it clear and straightforward. You were such a great help to me and provided a lot of assistance so promptly, which I really appreciate. If you'd like to learn more about the programs, or especially if you're a transfer student or someone with AP credits, I highly encourage you to reach out to our program advisors to talk through your unique needs. Please visit our website to learn more details about our department and individual programs, and follow us on social media to see what our day-to-day -day is like. And finally, apply. We do not currently require a portfolio. Thanks for listening, and I look forward to your questions. Hello? We can hear you, Annie. Okay. Do you want me to just say slide when you should turn the slide? That'd be great. Okay. Um, hello, I'm Annie Sullivan, and I'm an assistant professor of film studies, which is housed within the English department. And I'm so excited to be here to talk about the film studies and production program at OU. It was previously called Cinema Studies, so you might see that in writing, but we have rebranded ourselves as film. We are an energized interdisciplinary program that works actively with our students to study how films work, how they make meaning in our media saturated world, and how students can create their own films or videos. Well, many of our classes combine projects with a critical focus on analyzing films, we offer two different majors a Bachelor's of Arts degree in Film Studies, and a Bachelor of Arts degree in Film Production. Either way, students leave our program with a deeper critical understanding of the ways film and media circulate in our society and with professional skills to enter media industries. Slide. Slide. Um, to tell you a bit more, the Film Studies major immerses students in film history, theory, and criticism. In addition to classes that explore different historical periods of film, we offer students a variety of classes that explore significant topics related to film culture. This includes politics of diversity, audiences and film reception, global media industry, and different film genres from comedy to horror. You can see a list of recent and upcoming offerings on this slide. I teach some of these classes. I teach hip hop, black women filmmakers, and horror, if you have any of questions about those in particular. I will note our faculty are all designing new courses that respond to changes in film culture and new industry standards. We are also responsive to student interests. We teach classes we are passionate about, but only if we know students will resonate with those topics. Slide. We also have a film production major, which still requires the study of film history and theory, but includes a specialized sequence of courses on filmmaking. Our production major offers students hands-on experience with every aspect of the creative process, including screenwriting, editing, audio production, and directing. Production faculty offer courses on different forms of film and video, animation, documentary, video essay, and narrative. Slide. Our students are very active here on campus, as well as in the wider Metro Detroit community. OU film students have curated films they've chosen for public audiences at the Maple Theater. We have strong ties to a variety of film festivals and screening venues in the area. We brought students in contact with festivals like Idlewild, She Town Detroit, the Freep Film Festival, the Traverse City Film Festival, Cinema Detroit, and the Toronto International Film Festival, which I'll discuss more in a moment. Slide. The 
film studies in production offers students many opportunities to learn from experts in the field and produce their own creative works. This last year, we hosted Canadian actor and director Joey Klein, which we met at the Toronto International Film Festival, as well as award-winning documentary filmmaker Bing Liu. Students can also participate in our program's journal, Screen Culture, as both editors and contributing authors who get their work published. Right. Our program has a professional film partner, Michael Manasseri. He's a producer, director, and actor who works closely with the program and our students to offer professional training on the set of his feature films, as well as on commercials, short films, and music videos. His recent film, Give Me Liberty, which some of our students worked on, won an Independent Spirit Award last year. We also have resident filmmakers, the Decca brothers, Julian and Ben Decca, who are also both director, cinematographers, and visual effects artists. Both the Decca brothers and Manasseri, as well as our visiting filmmakers, make classroom visits and supervise workshops to bring additional professional knowledge and experience to our students. Slide. Uh, I don't see anything. Uh, for students interested in even more practical film experience, we highly encourage and coordinate internships and always work to draw attention to opportunities in filmmaking companies in the region. Or an objective of our program is to create connections with filmmakers and community members across Michigan. Therefore, we work to foster ties with regional film companies. Students in our program also get to share what they've learned with others. As you see in these photos, our filmmaking students um, conduct their own workshops in Meadowbrook Elementary School, a program the kids really love. Slide. On campus, workshops give attendees a chance to gain valuable and incredibly important experience in specialized areas, areas of digital film production. Workshop participants direct and film a student written screenplay using red cameras and professional sound and lighting equipment. We also have several campus events that showcase the innovative work our students produce. Next slide. One for our film challenge. This happens every homecoming weekend. And for the event, students and alumni work to create films in one day. Then those are shown on campus, followed by an award ceremony the following day. Another prominent event is the Grizz Dance Student Film Festival. In this last year, our students programmed a mixture of local films and OU student films, again with a jury and award ceremony, which was attended by the creator of the Toronto International Film Festival. So we're giving our students some industry attention. We also celebrate our graduating seniors with a creative showcase at a local film theater like the Imagine. All of those events have awesome attendance from both community members and the OU wider student body. So if you're interested in film, those are definitely campus events to keep on your radar. Slide. One of the highlights of our program, most popular features of our programs is our film festival class, which connects to a study abroad program to the Toronto International Film Festival, one of the world's largest and most significant festivals. Students get industry badges to attend networking events and the opportunity to attend major film premieres. Having been, I can also say it's just an awesome experience. I've not encountered any other university that offers such a program. The TIFF course is so popular, students continue to attend the festival in following years and we're also frequently joined by alumni. Every two years, we partner with the theater departments classical study in Greece program to offer students an interdisciplinary filmmaking trip. Last year, our program director, Andrea Ice, worked with film production students who made documentary films about their experiences abroad, which you can see here in these photos. Slide. The majority of our students are very active in campus organizations that the faculty also work closely with. Student video production is a club video services on campus with their production needs. They also coordinate student film events on campus like Grizz Dance and student workshops. 
Many of our students are also members of the OU Filmmakers Guild, a group that develops, produces, edits, and exhibits original films throughout the academic year. Both groups are very open and inviting of newcomers if you're interested in getting involved. Slide. After graduating, many of our students have gone on to pursue careers in the film and media industries. Film student studies alumni have entered graduate school to become film scholars, screenwriters, and archivists. Several production students have moved to Los Angeles to work in the film and media industry, while many others find jobs producing media content locally here in Michigan. The relationship we build with our students during their time at OU extends far beyond graduation. We keep close ties with alumni who continue to participate in our workshops and events. I'm at the beginning of my career here at OU and I am weirdly surprised to see so many students that I've met that have graduated before I was even hired who just keep coming back and remain so enthusiastic about the community we build here. We definitely look forward to getting to know each of our next class and having new students who contribute to that community and hope you may be among them. Slide. If you want to learn more about film studies and production at OU, please look at our OU website. Um, you can ask me questions. You can contact our uh, program advisor, Andrea Ice, or check out our social media. We're on Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, and now TikTok. Um, thank you. I'll hopefully talk to you in a bit. Hi, welcome to Oakland University and go for the gold. I'm Stephen Filler, Associate Professor of Japanese and Chair of the Department of Modern Languages and Literatures at Oakland University. Today, I'm going to introduce you to our department and talk a little bit about the value of studying a foreign language at the college level. Then I'm going to introduce you to the various programs that we offer at the department. So I study a foreign language at Oakland University. Studying foreign languages benefits students in many ways. Students of foreign languages develop critical thinking skills and earn higher scores on academic assessments. Language study will lead to new academic interests, skills, and opportunities. Foreign language competency will greatly increase your employment opportunities. More on this later. Foreign language classes equip students with a broader view of the world and a deeper understanding of cultural differences, useful in the workplace and in other situations. And finally, students will have a lot of fun in their language study and develop close relationships with other students and mentoring relationships with faculty members. The report from 2017 called Not Lost in Translation illustrates the current value of a language education in getting a job. It found that over five years, demand for bilingual workers in the United States had more than doubled to approximately 630,000 job postings. Employers were seeking bilingual workers for both low and high skilled positions, such as financial managers, editors, and industrial engineers. And employers are increasingly looking for workers who can speak languages such as Chinese, Spanish, and Arabic. Here's a list of just some of the fields that Oakland University's graduates in modern languages have gone into. Career options have ranged from law to governmental and non-governmental organizations. They've included teaching and also working in the countries that have been studied and teaching abroad. So there's really no limit to what you can do with your modern language degree. 
many students combine their foreign language major or minor with another degree program like political science or history or biology. And the possibilities, of course, are endless. So please keep that in mind if you're thinking about studying a foreign language here. At Oakland University, we offer majors in Spanish, French, German, and Japanese. And we offer minors in all of those languages, as well as Chinese and Italian. And if you are filling, fulfilling a foreign language requirement for a program like the Honors College, uh, you can use, of course, any of these languages. And we also offer courses in Hebrew and Arabic. So what are the requirements for our programs? Well, a minor generally requires uh, 20 credits, which is typically five courses beyond the second semester level. A major requires a minimum of 36 credits at the 3,000 and 4,000 levels, that is third and fourth year levels, in language, culture, literature, and other electives. And there are slight variations, of course. We also offer for students in professional degree programs like economics, business, international management, engineering, computer science, or computing, we offer a modified major, which is basically a second major with a slightly lower credit requirements. And other modified majors may be possible depending on which degree program you are interested in. If you're interested in, in combining your language studies with coursework in history, politics, art, religion, and other fields, you may want to consider the International Studies program, which is run outside of the Department of Modern Language, but in which you would still take um, a large quantity of language courses. Major programs include East Asian Studies and Latin American Studies, and there are a number of minors as well. If you're interested in going to teaching, as many of our students are, the School of Education and Human Services, together with our department, offers a fifth year secondary education program called STEP, which leads to Michigan teacher certification. It's valid for teaching in grades K through 12. And we offer liberal arts majors in French, German, Japanese, and Spanish. If you're concerned about the teaching job market, I'm happy to report that 100% of K through 12 modern language students in the past five years found teaching jobs right after graduation. Here's some information about the program and contact people. Please contact our advisor in modern languages for more information. One of the greatest parts about studying a foreign language at college is the chance to study abroad. And at Oakland, we have a great variety of study abroad programs ranging from a few weeks to a year or more. And in all of the languages that you've seen discussed here in our department. So I encourage you to contact the Office of International, Edu of International Education to look into the many options there are for study abroad many of which are surprisingly inexpensive. As you have seen, language study at college can be a great option and can open many doors. So I encourage you to check out the Modern Languages web pages and get to know some of our faculty members. And please feel free to contact any one of us with any questions you may have. Thank you very much, and I look forward to seeing you soon. Hello and welcome. My name is Professor Jason Oberfeld, and I'm here to tell you about the Department of Linguistics at Oakland University.
So I thought it would be a good idea to just start with the question of what linguistics is. Uh, well, linguistics is the scientific study of natural human languages. So given any of the 7,000 languages that you can observe in the world today, linguists ask questions like, what governs the structure of natural languages? What can a natural human language look like? And what can't it look like? What are those properties that we just never observe in natural human languages? Linguists are also interested in asking how people acquire and comprehend language. So if we think a little bit about um, what we're doing as we use language, then uh, right now I'm using my vocal folds and I'm using my mouth to create very specific changes in the air pressure in this room. Those are being currently picked up by my microphone, sent over the internet to your speakers, where they are being played and creating changes in the air pressure in the room that you're in. Those changes in air pressure are being picked up by your ears and being decoded then into a message that you have never heard before. So it's kind of a deceptively complex mode of communication that we can engage in. And moreover, children basically have this mode of communication mastered by the time they're five. So what allows them to do this so quickly and so effortlessly? Linguists are also interested in how language is used in social situations and in social interaction. So how do we use language to set up power dynamics or to tear down power dynamics? What is it that makes a certain kind of request a polite one, but another one a rude one? So basically just how do people use language with each other? Linguists are also interested in asking how languages change over time. So languages are not static entities, they always are undergoing change. So linguists are asking what kind of changes they undergo and what is a driving force for that, for instance. So um, as we look at these questions, one of the things that might be kind of obvious is how much linguistics intersects with uh, many, many different types of fields. As we'll see later, this has impacts for different career trajectories that you have for studying linguistics, but it opens up a lot of opportunities to mix and match, for instance. So I thought it would also be worth um, giving a little bit of an example uh, 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 with respect to what kinds of questions um, li uh, linguists ask. So when we talk about, you know, what are the structure of human languages, then what we're really talking about are what is the knowledge that people have about how their language works. And this is how we look for, um, you know, what languages can look like and what languages can never look like. Now, the cool part about this knowledge, though, is that it is, for the most part, implicit. The knowledge we have about how our language is structured and how it works is uh, really beyond our consciousness. So um, here's a really fun example. Um, it's English expletive infixation, and this is referring to the fact that in English you can take a word like fantastic, and you can take an expletive like flippin' and literally just drop it right down in the middle of the word. So we know that we can say fan flippantastic. Now, it turns out that this is actually a rule-governed process. There is some knowledge that we have that we didn't know that we have that tells us how this works. Because even though we've never heard this word before, we still implicitly know. We have uh, the intuition that you can't do it like this. Um, you can't say fantaf flip and stick. The intuition that hopefully you have is that that's just not how this process works. It has to be fan flip and tastic, and you can't say fan taff flip and stick. Again, where did this knowledge come from? Nobody ever taught it to you. You couldn't have memorized it. You just have this implicit knowledge about what is and isn't possible in English. Turns out that this knowledge is very general, so that you know that you can say a uh, uh, flipping gation, but not a flipping obligation. And you know that you can say callum a flipping zoo, but not calla flipping mazoo. You just have this implicit knowledge about what makes expletive insertion work, what makes it doesn't. So what does that knowledge look like? Where does it come from? And again, how do children figure it out, even though nobody's teaching this stuff to them? So if that's not already, uh, a good enough reason to study linguistics. Um, linguistics courses will also help you develop various transferable skills for setting out on a career, uh, career trajectory. So we literally teach you how to think and how to evaluate ideas. Uh, we provide you with critical thinking skills for evaluating hypotheses, evaluating ideas about how language works. Um, part of this is giving you um, skills in logic and actual argumentation. So how do you effectively present ideas and choose between them? And we focus on doing this both in written and spoken applications. So writing term papers and then also uh, doing presentations. How can you uh, 
uh, exercise these skills in both of these media. Part of doing linguistics is also problem solving, so taking large amounts of data, just like on the previous slide we had all of these English facts, how can you sift through large amounts of data, pull out interesting observations, and then moreover formalize them, account for them, provide some explanation for why the data looks the way it does. This is a huge skill of linguistics, and uh, oftentimes we do that with technological resources, so there's a lot of software that linguists use to look at speech or to do quantitative of uh, studies over, over their data sets. And then also you don't do linguistics in a bubble. Oftentimes you work as a team or as a group to solve problems and to uh, evaluate hypotheses. So along the way you'll necessarily pick up leadership skills, teamwork skills, and then because we're working with you know, up to 7,000 languages that exist in the world, you'll definitely acquire uh, an appreciation for the diversity of language, the diversity of culture, and then uh, appreciation for inclusion uh, as well. A degree in linguistics is going to provide you with those skills on the previous slide. They're going to be transferable to many, many different career paths. So um, you can, for instance, take your linguistics degree and move forward uh, into a career in speech language pathology. Uh, our department offers a three course certificate in teaching English as a second language, which would basically be your ticket to travel the world uh, teaching English. Um, many linguists go on to get master's uh, degrees or professional degrees that allow them to uh, work for Amazon, Google, Microsoft, and Apple doing computational linguistics. Um, linguists uh, famously crush the LSAT, so oftentimes will go on to be a language consultant in law, maybe they'll do marketing, um, linguists might go on to work for Duolingo, and then even you have to uh, mention being an accent consultant and doing video game localization, make sure the translations work. Those are things that linguists go on to do as well. Um, so it's worth pointing out then that our department is going to be offering a minor in speech language pathology. This is expected to launch in fall 2021. There's a six course sequence that will give you all the background in that to then go on and, and uh, pursue that degree as mentioned earlier. Um, so our department in particular will also offer many different opportunities for connecting with the professors and peers. Um, we do have meet and greets at the beginning of each semester. You can check our web page for this. Um, we have conversation outreach uh, opportunities. There are research groups in the department. Professors are always offering career and academic service uh, or academic success support. And then um, finally, we do have a linguistics club and a teaching English as a second language organization. Um, you're very much encouraged to go to our website where you can learn more about what we do. You can contact anyone in the department and we'll be happy to get back to you. Um, so thank you very much for your time and take care.